your emergency contact, who she notified in case of death. Welcome to the USP where I spent the last two plus decades of my life. Um, you know, when I was in Florence, I kind of stopped hustling, you know what I mean? I used to run a poker table, I used to run football tickets, I used to hustle here and there, you know, to make it so I don't have to call home and take care of myself. But when I got to Florence, I only had a few years left. And for me, I don't want to get involved in anything if my heart's not in it all the way. Because with all those things comes drama and issues and you have to be willing to do deal with it. If you run a poker table and people start owing you money and all this, and you don't have the means to collect or you're not willing to go and collect, then no one's ever gonna pay you. But you can say, oh, just run a cash game and keep it simple, but on a poker table, it really doesn't work like that because if you say you run a cash game and cash game only, then your game's only gonna last for, you know, maybe a week or two till everybody runs out of cash, right? You know, because when you're playing poker, if you got seven people sitting at your table, there's gonna be one big winner, one little winner, and everybody else is the loser besides the house. Because, you know, I collect 10% when I run a poker table, and that 10% is 10% of every pot. So if there's $100 in the pot, I get $10. If there's $1,000 in the pot, I get $100. And, you know, out here on the streets, when you run a poker game, you get 10%, but only 10% up to $10. So if there's $100 in the pot, you get $10. If there's $1,000 in the pot, you still only get $10. But in the penitentiary system, it's different. I didn't establish that. I didn't make the rules, but the rule benefits the house. So when I you know, start running a poker table, why would I change the rules up, right? So same thing with anything else that you're doing. When you're running a football ticket, you might get a situation that uh, I had mentioned a couple of videos prior about 5'3", he had his runner, you know, fraudulently marked up some hits and stuff, ended up costing him some money, some money that he didn't have to back up, and he almost got in a train wreck. But he knew them dudes didn't hit that ticket the right way. You know, he knew there was something foul, but he didn't have the means to collect or to not pay it. You know what I mean? And he was just a little dude, a little hustler. Me, I've been in the situation every single, you know, a lot of times. When you're running games, when you're running football tickets and all that stuff, something's always gonna come up. Because like I said, you like to think that everybody in the penitentiary is up to standards, but the reality is they're not. There's a lot of scumbags, there's a lot of schemers, there's a lot of dirty motherfuckers, right? If not, why motherfuckers be getting killed every day, you know? So when I got to Florence, I know all the possible drama that comes with any activity that I get myself into. And at that time, I was able to see the light as far as getting an opportunity to come home someday. So I fell back. But through the course of my years, you know, the last 20 years that I've been down, I develop a habit. You know, smoking habit, drug habit, even a little bit of gamble. I don't really say I have a gambling habit because when I gamble, I'm always gambling to hustle. I don't gamble to like play the odds and hope I win, right? But <clears throat> if anybody knows anything about someone with habits, it's hard to break the habit, right? And I had resources out here in the streets. And, you know, before I continue, you know, I 
find myself apologizing to my wife a lot for putting the burden on her for getting me out of jams, you know, but not just my wife, my homeboys, my family. And you know, at the time, I knew it wasn't healthy for my relationship out here with the people. I knew it wasn't healthy for my health in general, but it was just, had it happen, I couldn't shake it. And I try to like minimize it and maintain it as best as I can. But, you know, I had a couple of incidents where it almost got me into a funk, right? But I've always paid all my bills. Sometimes it took me a little bit longer because I overextended my resources. But much love to like my homies out here. I mean, especially, you know, I'm so grateful for my wife and my brothers that every time I called and I needed something, they made sure I was able to uh, take care of my business, right? So that being said, um, me and the homie, uh, Hennessy, we was on the rail, chopping it up in front of my cell. You know, I, at this time, when I was in Florence, I lived in, uh, 231, the very last sale by the shower. So I have like a little patio, you know, that I put my chair out to just kick it. And Hennessy lived next door to me. So we're in there just chopping it up, minding our own business, you know what I mean? And then uh, when they call to the move, here comes this dude, Bo, Crip dude, big old Crip dude. You know, he got, he got muscles on top of muscles, right? Out of Vegas. So he comes up there and he's like, man, yeah, we just ran this nigga up. You know, one of his homies. Yeah, this motherfucker out there running up bills and shit, giving people stories. So, you know, the homie smashed him and ran him up. You know, motherfuckers that don't take care of their business, you get the head cracked. And on and on and on and on. So he burns off. It rolls out. And at this time, I had owed him $100. Maybe I'm a week late, but I've been dealing with this dude for the whole time he's been there, spent thousands of dollars with him. You know what I mean? Smoking, smoking that fucking punk ass deuce, right? And I just took the wrong exit. I gotta turn around. <laughs> I'm out with the mountains. I'm going to visit my, uh, Sister, her and her family's out here camping, and uh, I just got off the wrong exit, so I got a bus of Yui. But anyway, so he burns off. Me and Hennessy look at each other. You know, Hennessy's a uh, NF, you know, stuff familiar. And, you know, he smokes a little bit here and there, and so I'm hitting up Hennessy. I'm like, yo, this for some money? But yeah, I owe him like $150 or something. Ain't shit, ain't nothing. He's like, why you owe him some money? I'm like, yeah, I owe him uh, about $100. So, so I'm like, you know, looking at Hennessy, I'm like, man, is he trying to insinuate some to us? He's like, man, it sounds like it, right? So I'm like, all right. So, now at this time, I'm trying to, I'm gonna go holler at both, right? But my Sally at this time, Popper, the one that we end up um, boarding off the island, he comes out of the cell and he's like, man, my radio's gone, my radio's gone. I said, what the fuck you talking about? Man, I left my radio right here at the end of the bunk and somebody stole my radio. Like, man, ain't nobody stole your radio, fool. We, ain't nobody coming to sell and steal shit. Nah, man, I'm telling you, my radio's gone. My, I'm telling you, my, my radio's gone. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. So now, in my head, I'm like, man, who the fuck will come up in my spot and steal my shit, right? So we go in the sale and we look for, you know, he. 
He's in the cell, I'm watching him, he's searching the room or whatever. He swears up and down, he can't find my radio. So this dumb motherfucker comes out on a tear, popper. He's like, man, somebody fucking took my shit. I find out who took my shit and whoop de whoop, right? So I was like, fuck, all right. So I go to my homeboy, Rudy, Rudy, uh, Rudolph, uh, he's a um, Minnesota. He's one of the, you know, higher ranking members. At the time that we were on the yard, they had a homie named Chongo that uh, had the yard for the, for the Texas MA, the Minnesota. But, you know, his homies always wanted him to step up and take that role. But he's like, man, I'm just kicking it, man. I'm, I'm cool. You know, because he's been on other yards that where he had the politics and they were all that. But um, that's my road dog. And everything I've ever asked him, everything I ever needed from him, without hesitation, he pulled it out for me, you know what I mean? So I go over to his cell. I'm like, hey, Rudolph, let me, ho let me holler at you, dude. He's like, what's up, man? I said, man. This motherfucker in my cell, he said somebody came up in our cell and stole his fucking radio. He's like, what? I said, yeah. So at this time, I don't walk around with a knife. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't keep a knife on me, but and the only reason I don't do that is because I know I have access to shit. I'm on, I'm on the hot list. I just got out of Lewisburg, and like I said, I'm getting ready to, I got like three, four more years. If God willing, I'm gonna make it home. Right, and in Florence, they liable when you when they know you're short and you get caught with a knife or whatever, they liable to give you more time for it. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I stopped, you know, running a poker table. I stopped running a ticket and all the rest of it because right now, you know, I'm hoping that I can make it to the door. But at the same time, I know the environment that I live in. So I let the people that fuck with me know what I'm trying to do. And the people that really fuck with you, homie, if they know you're short, they're gonna tell you to fall back, you know? So I explained to Rudy like why I don't have a knife and all that stuff. And he's like, man, don't even trip, I got you. And he tells like, hey, if you ever need anything, it's right here, it's right there. And I had a homie from uh, New Mexico uh, call him Youngster. Same thing, he's a fool. He got he went home from Atwater, was out for like a year and a half, two years, and caught another 20, right? He came back, but he's with it. He 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 pressed the he presses the gas. So same thing with him. He was like, hey man, uh, whenever you need some, I got them all stashed out on a compound. You can take me to, you know, whatever unit. He's like, yeah, three windows from the right under this rock. I got this over here in the yard. He goes by the bathroom over here. There's a twig that comes out this way. I got it stashed over here. You know, same thing with the with the NFs. You know, when I'm on the yard or whatever, they let me know, hey man, if you ever need anything, we got our stash over here or over there. You know, so, I mean, when some things, it's very rare that things happen just spontaneously. You know, you can always feel like the tension coming. So, you know, at any given time when you feel the tension is coming, if I, I need to get a hold of some, I know where to get access to it, right? So on this particular day, I go up in Rudy's cell. I'm like, hey man, uh, I need a, I need some. He's like, all right, I got you. And this dude, he is a freak. Him and my homeboy fam are freaking masters at freaking hiding this shit. Like I can't hide a damn thing in my cell, right? But for fam, that fool, he had like 20 freaking knives in his cell. Me and, me and his cell got shook down. They found these two little syringes that I had hid in a book and took me to the shoe for it. And they didn't find nothing. I, in fam cell and we all know fam had like fucking 20 something knives in there because he was holding the knives not he wasn't holding it for us or anything but it was for us 
you know, he had all the damn knives, right? So anyway, point being, I can't hide shit in my cell. But I go to Rudy and he's got shit hidden in plain sight. Unless you know where it was at, you can be in there for an hour and never find it. And it's been that way. Like people's come in, the CEOs come in and shook down his shit and they they never found none of his shit, right? Rudy's never been taken to the shoe because they found some knives in his cell. So when I come up in there, he's like, yeah, I got you. He goes through this space, fucking pulls something off, scrapes it, pulls me out a little piece. So I grab it, I tuck it because you know, if somebody came up in your cell, there's not gonna be any more conversation about it. If I run across whoever it is that has the fucking radio, I'm not gonna ask him how he got it or who he got it from. I'm just gonna take off because he violated me by coming into my cell, right? So, so we're running around the unit I'm going on people's desk and picking up their, you know, he, uh, Papa gave me the description of the radio that he had. So I'm going there looking at the radio, checking it out. You know what I mean? And I was like, hey man, I'm just, you mind if I check that radio? You know, I don't just go grab it. I was like, hey, you mind if I check out that radio? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And I look at it and move on because ain't nobody there had our radio, right? So about 10 minutes later, Papa calls me in the room. He's like, hey man, I fucked up. I said, what do you mean you fucked up? Well, it's right here, I, I, I found it. It was under my bed. And I'm hot, right? I'm, I'm steaming right now, because I'm like, okay. I said, so what the fuck you go, if something like this happens, you don't go announce that shit on the tier. You come to me and be like, hey man, something's missing out of my cell. Let's go discreetly look at it. But now you fucking scream out the tear that somebody came up in the cell and stole your shit. One, you're hipping the dude that if it did get stolen, for him to fucking hide that shit and whatever. But usually when shit gets stolen out of a cell or out of a unit, it doesn't stay in the unit. These dudes go and give it to one of their homies in another unit and have them sell it in another block so motherfuckers don't, you know, don't don't catch them with it in the block, right? But two, you're letting people know that, man, we might be a bunch of fucking suckers because somebody didn't have no problem coming up in our cell and stealing our shit, right? And then three, I tell them, man, what you got on you? I said, what you mean what I got on me? I said, what the fuck you got on you? And I pull out my knife, you know? And he looked at me, his eyes got big, and he looked at me, I was like, where's yours at? I said, huh? What do you mean? I said, well, well, tell me what the fuck was you gonna do when you found a dude that had your radio, homie? You run around here screaming that somebody came up in the cell and took your shit, but what the fuck are you gonna do when, some, when you found somebody that, with your shit? And he didn't have an answer for me. I was like, hey man, this ain't no fucking game, Holmes. But anyway, ain't nobody came up in our cell. The fucking radio was under his bed. Dumbass didn't fucking look everywhere and whatever. But now that that issue is resolved, I need to go holler at Bo, right? So I go walking through uh through the unit looking where, where Bo was at. And he was uh, about seven, eight cells down from, from my cell. And I look in the window and I see Bo and all his Crip homies in there. So I knock on the, uh, on the door, boom. One of the homies open up the door, he's like, what's up, Mason? I say, hey, Bo, he's like, what's up? I say, man, when you get a chance, let me holler at you. He's all right, all right, right? So he sit there, you know, they're powwowing about, you know, running their homies off. You know, beating the dude up for old money or whatever. So I come in my cell and I wait for him. I pull my knife out, put it in my pocket, 
And uh, like I said, about five minutes later, he knocks on my door and he comes in. I understand, this is, this is a big ass dude, man. Like, ain't nothing small about Bo. Like I said, he got muscle on top of muscles, right? <clears throat> so, when he comes in, I was like, hey, close the door. He's like, what's up, man? I said, hey, uh, I just got a question for you, homie. He's like, oh, what's up? I said, um, earlier, when me and Henny was on top of the steps, you came in here, you know, talking all that shit, that crazy shit about dudes owing money, getting get their head cracked and get run up and, and all the rest of it. I was like, you know, I know I owe you about $100. I told you I was gonna take care of you. So I'm just, I'm just asking if that uh, conversation was meant for me. You know what I mean? And he's like, Oh, no, nah, man, no. Nah. I was just telling you what happened to uh, to the homie that we ran up this morning because he had old money and this and that. But, you know, when he came up there on top of that stairs, that conversation wasn't like that. You know, the conversation was, oh, whoop the whoop whoop this and that, you know? And uh, but anyway, I think I'm lost right now. Fuck. Hold on. Uh, but, um, so, you know, he's like, nah, man, that conversation wasn't for you and, and Henny, man. I was just letting you guys know what was happening and this and that and so on. So I'm like, all right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be sitting there like, oh, no, nah, you was talking shit or, I mean, that's what it was. That's what it was, right? So, so for me, I'm like, all right. But I'm like letting you know, homie, like, don't get it twisted. The only way I'm leaving this compound is down on fucking stretcher. Ain't nobody running me up top. It's like, nah, I know that, Mason, man. I'm just, I wasn't even talking about that. I was just talking. Shit. I think I'm lost. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so... He leaves the room and um you know everything was cool but you know my point is like you know you got a lot of dudes that run their mouths a lot just for the sake of running their mouths right and they don't really understand how some people can take it and yeah it's my bad that you know, I haven't paid him in about a week or whatever, but, you know, I mean, I've always paid all my bills. That's why I'm able to do what I do. And he knows that. And he knows that when he was dealing with me. So for him to come off, you know, like aggressive, like, yeah, man, my fuck ain't paying me. This, this and that's going to happen. And shit, I, you know, I took offense to that, you know, but, but you know, but that was what, with, with everything like when you're in a conversation about around people with people or whatever maybe your intention isn't to convey a certain agenda or a certain message but the people hearing it the people listening it, they might not take it the same way that that you're taking it you know what i mean just like how i took it like oh you're trying to insinuate some that you know what i mean where and as far as I believe, like even till today, yeah, I believe that he, that's what he was doing. But when he got put in that cell with me and I called him on it, you know, he backed up. But I know he, and I, the reason I know that that's what happened is because, you know, he's at, he has a habit of that. I mean, this wasn't the only incident I've had with him I've had some, you know, I've had some issues with this dude, and and every time when I pull up on him, he's like, oh, nah, man, why are you tripping? Why the fuck am I tripping? Why the fuck are you running your mouth? You know what I mean? But, but like, you know, that's why I'm always conscious of, 
like the things that I say. I make sure I don't ever try to insinuate some that I don't mean because I'm having a conversation or whatever and somebody takes it the wrong way. I don't know they're taking it the wrong way, but the dude that's taking it the wrong way, and for most people in the penitentiary, for dudes that's about something or even cowards, they're not gonna wait for you to bring them a move. If they feel like, oh, this dude's mad at me, this dude think I stole his shit, or whatever, this dude might bring me a move. So their mindset is, shit, I better bring him a move before he brings me a move, you know? And now you're a dumbass because you're running your mouth, you just sitting there, don't know what the fuck's going on, and get hit upside your head. And now you're looking stupid. And what are you gonna do? Oh man, why you do that? I didn't even mean to say that. So to avoid all that, homie, is always mind your P's and Q's. Understand that some things you say, you can't take back. And understand like, when you're insinuating some, or seem like you're insinuating some, people's gonna take it that you're insinuating some. And motherfuckers ain't waiting for you to fucking hit them upside the head, homes. They're gonna make sure they get you before you get them. Welcome to the USP.